if we referred to fake news 50 years ago, what would generally come to mind would be this kind of fake news. However, the digital revolution has created an entirely new kind of fake news. There is no doubt that the digital revolution has enhanced communi communication throughout the world. But that technology, along with the proliferation of talk radio and cable news, has made information systems more polarized and more contentious. It has propagated misinformation, distortion, and at times, outright lies. Now, some examples of this are ludicrous, such as the story of the man who sued McDonald's because he was still depressed after eating a Happy Meal. But other examples of fake news are more insidious, such as a report that the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, said that vaccines cause autism, or that an investigation determined that celebrity chef Anthony Bourdain was killed by Hillary Clinton operatives. Now these claims appeared on the internet and was subsequently posted to millions of email recipients. There seemed to be no limit on misinformation about the causes of the COVID-19 pandemic that we are suffering through today. A poll taken last month by The Economist revealed that a whopping 49% believe that the epidemic might be man-made, possibly from a lab in China. The Chinese government, on the other hand, insists that the virus was brought to China by US servicemen. And there's no limit on misinformation concerning cures and prevention of the coronavirus. Some people have swallowed bleach to ward off the virus. One person ingested fish tank cleaning products because it contained chloroquine, the untested so-called miracle drug. Some people believe that breast milk can protect against the virus. And President Trump recently suggested that patients can cure themselves by injecting disinfectants into their lungs or he suggested bringing ultraviolet light into the body as a way to cure the, the disease. And fake news has been weaponized for political purposes by both political parties, such as in 2004, the Swift Boat campaign against John Kerry and in the Bertha movement against President Obama and Democratic operatives use misinformation to help Doug Jones defeat Roy Moore in his Senate bid in Alabama in 2017. Such intentional deception represents an all out assault on truth, and it has dangerous implications for the future of democracy. So the aim of this presentation is to address the following questions. What are the roots of fake news? What role has it played in world history and in American history? What is the impact of fake news on society today? And <clears throat> what can be done to combat disinformation today? So during the 2016 presidential election, there was a stream of completely made up stories that seemed to originate from one small town in Eastern Europe, a place called Veles in the tiny country of Macedonia. Macedonia has a weak economy, so high school students are not allowed to work. And so they look for creative ways to make money. And as a result, teenagers in this small town of Veles launched at least 140 U.S. political websites, almost all of which supported Trump in the 2016 campaign. But these adolescent Macedonians knew almost nothing about American politics, and they didn't particularly care about Donald Trump. However, 
they knew that the U.S. presidential election, and specifically Donald Trump, was a very hot topic on social media. And they also knew they could make money through Facebook advertising, and that the best way to generate shares on Facebook was to publish sensationalist and often false content that catered to Trump supporters. And so they copied and embellished from American sites that were pro-Trump such as Fox News, Breitbart, and Infowars. Now, these teenagers would have happily copied anti-Trump fake news as well, but they couldn't find any good pro-Clinton fake news sites. And so these get-rich-quick Macedonian teenagers wrote stories with headlines such as Florida Democrats vote to impose Sharia law on women, or FBI agents suspected in Hillary email leaks found dead in apparent murder-suicide. And Pope Francis shocks the world, endorses Donald Trump for president. Those posts together generated more than one million hits, resulting in significant ad revenue for the owners of those sites. Now, aside from the allure of easy money, the teenagers also took pride in the fact that a small country like Macedonia could hoodwink Facebook, Google, and the American political establishment in general. Misinformation, spin, lies, and deceit are nothing new in American politics. But the epidemic of false and bogus news stories in recent years is certainly unprecedented. During the final three months of the 2016 US presidential campaign, the top performing fake election news stories on Facebook generated more traffic than the top stories from 19 major news outlets combined. Studies showed that fake news headlines fooled American adults about 75% of the time. Yet the label fake news is of recent origin. It was introduced after the 2016 election when Hillary Clinton made a speech in which she mentioned the epidemic of malicious fake news and false propaganda that flooded social media over the past year. President-elect Trump took up the phrase the following month in January of 2017, just a little over a week before taking office. In response to a question from CNN reporter Jim Acosta, President Trump said, you're fake news. Around the same time, he started repeating that phrase, fake news on Twitter. 